uh, I was the track national champion without a track. <laughs> so we used to train on the road uh, and we would pick a stretch and we would do our sprint sessions we would, we would do our individual time trial session on one stretch of the road uh, we would prefer to use an inclined road you know uh, maybe use a little more effort uh, make it a little more difficult i had a very good coach as well his name was is mumtaz ahmed you know sometimes there were there were times that i would feel that i'm going to lose my life you know i, I would feel that my heart is going to stop uh, i would tell him ustad mai mar ja raha hu you know i would tell him he would be on the bike he had a yesd in those days uh, he would ride my competitor was his bike <laughs> yes, so so he would he would expect me to to keep up with his bike uh, and to beat his bike and every time i increase the speed he would increase it by raising the throttle <laughs> and i would come to a stage where i would tell him ustad i'm dying mai mar ja raha hu he would tell me cross the line and die <laughs> <laughs> for the men elite you have the individual time trial you have the individual pursuit you have the points race you have the kirin race mm. and uh, now they are also planning to introduce the madison mm. the madison is nothing but a points race mm. which is done with two riders okay like a team mm. one rider at all given time is is part of the competition mm. while the other rider is is taking a kind of recovery mm. on the on the upper side of the track mm. when that rider wants to change or switch mm. the, the the power he pulls the rider into the into the, the race and he relaxes mm. it's kind of a teamwork where one is putting an effort and one is recovering mm. and this keeps going on and there's no limit you can keep changing as number of times you want mm. in this academy of ours mm. we don't only focus on physical development mm. or we don't only focus on the game mm. we focus on overall development of a child yeah now we want the child not only to be physically fit mm. we want him to be mentally strong mm. we also want him to have a good attitude mm. because i always say if you have a good attitude you will reach a good attitude in life mm. your attitude that you reach in life depends on the attitude you have and the very basics to get a good attitude is a good gratitude this is this is uh, this is the way i put it mm. so we teach the children the basics of gratitude you know just being thankful for small small things i am bai ki venki and this is the working athlete podcast here i talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration training tips time management and lifestyle advice if this is something that interests you please make sure you subscribe to the channel today's guest dr maxwell trevor is a living legend of indian cycling He was a national champion for 10 consecutive years between 1980 to 1990. A record that no one was able to replicate till date. He has written and rewritten the record books for multiple events on the cycling track during his racing career and won over 250 medals in the process. He is now an official with the Cycling Federation of India, a faculty member for coaches at National Institute for Sports and Cycling Federation of India. He is also a member of Talent Identification Committee for Kelo India. Apart from the great work he does in all these official roles, he also works at the grassroots level with young talent coming to the Maxwell Trevor Cycling Academy in Hyderabad. In this episode, we talked about the work that is going on at Maxwell Trevor Cycling Academy to nurture young talent. The amazing career he had on the track, the different events that are applicable for various age groups for track cycling, how one can get into track cycling and the various selection criteria they look at while identifying the talent for track cycling. This is a treasure trove of information. So please make sure you listen to the entire episode and share it with the youngsters and their parents who would benefit from all this valuable information. Now let us dive into my chat with Dr. Maxwell Trevor. So welcome to the Working Athlete Podcast, sir. It is a pleasure having you on the Working Athlete Podcast. Thank you, Vic Banky, and thank you very much for coming down all the way from Bangalore and visiting our academy and seeing what we are doing. Great, right, sir. It's it's been my pleasure. So this morning, uh, I joined you for the uh, 
uh, for the training session that you took the kids to and uh, i i was it, it was mind blowing experience uh, to see the kids from the ages of 6 to uh, i think the eldest was what uh, 14 yeah so kids to, uh, from 6 to 14 and also the uh, uh, under 18 and under 23 kids uh, the young lads uh, you have taken them to the uh or or that safe stretch to train where the state meet is going to happen and uh, then for all the kids the parents also showed up uh, so sir let us talk a little bit about the talent hunt that you have recently conducted that uh, kind of culminated into the what we saw in the morning today Yeah, this was always a big dream of mine to to nurture kids at this age from 6 years onwards because if we want to see medals at the olympics i think we have to look at talent from the age of 6 mm. and this is how it's done all over europe this is how it's done in the western world almost every uh, good sports playing country or medal winning countries at the olympics this is how they do it they they go down to the grassroots level they tap talent when they are young spot them when when they are young that that was our slogan uh, before we started this and uh, initially we were very apprehensive about the whole thing because a 6 year old kid no matter how interested we get him into the sport he cannot do anything without the support of the parents so we had an extra challenge here not only trying to motivate the children to take up cycling as a sport as a, a mode of fitness we had a bigger challenge ahead of us how to convince the parents and convincing the parents was not a easy task because most of the parents they feel that cycling is a dangerous sport cycling is a very expensive sport cycling is also a man and machine combination where so much so many technical aspects are involved so we were facing so many challenges and we we came out with a plan let us focus as much as we are focusing on the children let us focus on the parents and you know tell them about cycling tell them about the benefits of cycling tell them how their child can reach the olympics if he has the talent and we started working in this direction and we done a lot of homework and we started talking and interacting with parents and then we came out with this idea to have a talent identification championship and we are expecting around maybe 100 to 120 130 children to take part and to our utter surprise we done the campaign and we were motivating parents and we were trying to go around and talk to children and talk to parents and when the day came it was the 21st of august uh, 2021 when the day came for the event we we were not ready to even handle that much there were 600 entries 650 entries that came in Mm. 650 entries is is like a nationals yeah 600 and, and these are kids we are talking about kids from the age of 6 to 12 to 14 years right. handling 650 children is not a joke yeah so we had a very very big cha- challenge and task at hand mm. but we managed to complete to go ahead and do it and successfully do it yeah we had more than 5000 to 6000 spectators there including the parents all the parents were there and i think this made a big change in cycling mm. in hyderabad at least yeah we also had entries come from other other parts of the country like uh, maharashtra tamil nadu and other places and they participated with so much of enthusiasm and so much of grid you know they, they was full they were full of zeal mm. that will to win yeah and when we seen this and when the parents seen actually what their children can do mm. i think this was a turning point for the game in, yeah. especially in hyderabad yeah and that gave a turning point and then we said let us let us not lose this momentum and mm. carry on with it mm. and we plan to have a talent uh, identific after the talent identification of this event we wanted to do something further on we wanted mm. to conduct conduct a camp mm. and we selected around 50 children in this mm. actually we selected around 60 mm. thinking that you know there will be about 50% dropouts and we will 
land up with around 30 children yeah but what actually happened was beyond the 60 we got another 20 30 people requesting us to take their kids as well <laughs> yeah. and put them in the camp right so you know this was more than uh, overwhelming and this was more than what we expected so i think we are heading in the right direction and i think that this is a great start for us yeah. and uh, as i always say hats off to the parents yeah. they always say i'm doing a great job but i think they do a better job than me yeah absolutely sir so to reach out to those many uh, kids and their parents what were the primary avenues that you kind of approached was it like schools and stuff first of all i i uh, shot a, a small little video mm. explaining what the game is all about mm. uh, telling them what i achieved myself mm. and from where to where i came mm. in the sport mm. and uh, like a brief introduction of the game mm. in general to, oh. to the public mm. and the benefits of the game and how the how the the game actually helped me mm. and brought me from where to where and what i have today is because of the game mm. and things like that mm. and that video went viral oh. that video went absolutely viral mm. i think that was one of the big uh, differences mm. that made uh, this change come through right and many people told me you know it was because of your background in cycling and because mm. people know you as an icon in cycling mm. uh, it went viral mm. but i don't think it was it was that i just think that you know people were actually hungry to know about cycling mm. many people i think we as cyclists or we as a cycling community mm. we need to do more mm. to educate people who don't know about cycling right you know see cricket mm. everybody knows everything about cricket yeah. you, you call a, a lay person he can he can uh, do the refereeing of a game or he knows all the rules and regulations of the game yeah my aim is to see cycling like that mm. i want everyone in, in the community everyone in society mm. to know what is cycling how many nationals we have what kind of cycles there yeah. the rules and regulations it may be a little more technical than than cricket mm. but it's definitely not hard mm. and i am very sure and confident that one day mm. we will see cycling in india like how cricket is yeah no sir that that is true i mean it is i i think there is a certain uh, amount of truth to it that uh, because of your uh, history the because of the kind of uh, career you had the legendary uh, person you are uh, that has its own charm but added to that what i find uh, very interesting is the kind of hunger you have beyond your career in helping others grow as well so i think that uh, you know your hunger to share the knowledge share the wealth of experience that you have uh, in bringing up the talent i think that is what is uh, you know the differentiating factor and i think uh, we will see great things uh, going forward from hyderabad and under your guidance and uh, when you talked when you said uh, you 5000 5, people were there to see the event it is mind blowing right yes, so uh, that is the kind of if uh, you know there may be 650 uh, you know kids that were there but there the were people around the parents and their relatives and all when they see this kind of uh, atmosphere the kind of uh, things that go in cycling i think the awareness will also increase and uh, the kind of educational video that you uh, said i think that will also uh, go a long way uh, in promoting the awareness and bringing the awareness so sir after the talent uh, hunt itself when you uh, you further conducted uh, cycling camp and you know are uh, take uh, doing training for them so how did that uh, uh, progress sir yeah so we selected these kids and we we had a camp we call it the talent development camp mm. we had a talent identification championship yeah. now we had a talent development camp mm. we wanted to work on this talent mm. now in this camp we wanted to get more things across to the parents and to the children mm. now just that small one event or one uh, meeting with the parents was not sufficient because there's so much to learn in cycling yeah. there's so much to share in cycling mm. so during this camp we took the opportunity of having various kind of workshops on nutrition on uh, general health 
on training programs, how important not only training but nutrition and recovery is. We started explaining. Basically, we were we were having kind of you know as what I do to uh, teach coaches. I'm in the faculty for teaching coaches. I was using the same kind of methods with the parents, hmm. and I think it actually worked because the parents got so involved. Hmm. in trying to gain more and more knowledge about the game mm. that actually motivated me yeah. and i started sharing more and more and it became like on a regular basis mm. they would ask so many questions and i would and i just uh, thank god that i could answer all the questions mm. there was never a time that a question was put to me and i didn't have an answer although i always say if i don't have the answer i'll get back to you yeah. but uh, i that did that situation never arose till now mm. but i i always tell them it's not necessary that we know everything but mm. definitely you must ask questions and they come up with some really intelligent questions mm. i don't know if you were part of the i was asking the questions today as well mm. and they came out with some real good questions yeah and uh, you know that that is what we need we need mm. when you get more questions you know that people are hungry to learn more yeah so that is that is what i really enjoy because the number of questions when i say questions everyone's hands go up everyone asking questions and yeah. that really motivates me to see the hunger yeah. in the children and the parents to learn more about the game mm. they it shows their in more complete involvement as well yeah yeah the one of our plans was to get the parents involved in everything mm. we do we did not we wanted to be transparent in what we do mm. we wanted the parents to see what their children are doing mm. there were a few occasions when we had a few crashes with the kids mm. and uh, we told the chief, the parents you know just leave it to us we will handle mm. it don't mm. get uh, bothered yeah. this is a game mm. and we would just get the kid to stand up on his own get mm. back on the bike and and take part ride again yeah. sometimes there were there were a little blood here and there mm. and as a parent you get a little worked up yeah. but it it was just a matter of few days that mm. they got the message this is sport yeah. you know this is how sportsmen behave right. and we kept telling them this yeah. is what a sportsman is yeah. you know we fall but we don't stay down we we stand up again yeah. Yeah. no matter how many falls we have we never stay on the floor we mm. stand up again yeah. so these are the things that they were really they enjoyed seeing their child mm. become a kind of a you know real fighting uh, warrior for for the sport mm. a man or a child who can just stand up on his feet again after a crash pick up his bike and fight to to win again mm. to to the finish line yeah. so i think these were very motivational uh, experiences to the parents as well it was so different parents told me it was so different normally when a child falls you know a group of people come to attend him yeah. here we were being pushed away they said yeah. we were keeping all everyone away and said get up on your feet take yeah. your bike you know we were doing something in the reverse yeah. instead of calling people we were pushing them away and saying let him stand on his feet yeah. and they really appreciated that and they seen the ability of their children yeah. they, they could really take it and there were number of times where you know after they got the message after they got what what it takes and what we do we appreciate it mm. when a child falls he gets back on the cycle he doesn't need to win if he just finishes on the line we ask all the parents all the children to clap for him mm. that's a great motivation for the child mm. the next time he falls you don't have to tell him anything yeah. he is back on his cycle again yeah. because he knows there are applause for him when he does there's those things yeah. so these are this is how we work mm. and i think uh, the method we we put it really worked and we are really t- totally satisfied with the way things are being uh, dealt with at the academy mm. and i'm very proud of heading this ha- academy where i have a great team mm. to work for me mm. and the team is just getting bigger and bigger mm. with the involvement of the parents right can you share some of the kind of the skill drills or the critical thinking uh, aspects that you implement for the kids for keeping their interest see one thing we have to keep in mind a 6 mm. year old kid when he comes to the velodrome for the first time mm. it's just mind blowing for him he doesn't even think that that is a cycling track mm. he doesn't even believe that a cycle can actually go on that seeing the degree the banking on the on the velodrome mm. the first challenge is to get his mind clear that mm. you know you can actually go up there mm. so what we do is we mm. demonstrate a few skills with the senior riders mm. we make them do a few uh, team changing we make them do a few sprints mm. that's to get the message across to the child's mind mm. you know that it is possible mm. seeing is believing mm. then what we do is we get them to start with the blue band mm. we don't allow them to go up the banking because mm. it is dangerous mm. and the cycles we are using for the children mm. are not meant to go up the banking mm. so once they get that now the the first the main thing is that they hardly 
rode on a velodrome before or they never rode on a vel- velodrome mm. before mm. they they come with just about knowing how to ride a cycle because that's the age where they, they just learn to ride yeah now from there we take it mm. we have certain drills where we put cones and we make them ride zigzag between these cones mm. then we make them we put a bag and we put a bottle we, we try to get them to pick up the bottle on the run mm. bending forward mm. you know these are balancing skills mm. then we have a kind of a slow cycle race for them where we just need to get them to have more balance on the cycle then we the cornering skills mm. we teach them how to take a left turn how to take a right turn how to you know which which part of the the track you used for a right turn we do all this off track mm. and then we also teach them group riding mm. we put them in a group and we teach them how to how to ride in a group and how uh, important it is when even when your wheel touches we also teach them various other skills like you you, you know if in case somebody comes in the front of you to block you mm. how to get out of that situation mm. and various other thing how to take a standing start mm. how how to how to do a finish mm. how to get up on your seat and finish mm. so these these are the various skills that we use we also use the tunnel of of the velodrome because it's kind of a curved and zigzag mm. so we make them do a standing start mm. and while they are on the standing on the pedal you know what a standing start is and how difficult it is uh, because you're using all your effort mm. and at that speed they have to do do these curves mm. so this is a great kind of a skill that that we use almost everything available at the cycling velodrome mm. to teach the children mm. and to for them to benefit in various other skills mm. like critical thinking you mm. were not talking about critical thinking mm. we allow them to play a lot of games like football handball mm. uh, rugby mm. the reason is critical thinking is a very important aspect in everyone's life mm. you know if you have to achieve something in life there's a, there are thousand times that you will come in come to a situation mm. where you don't have much time you have a few seconds you have to use a very critical kind of thinking there mm. what to do in a split second mm. you know let's say you're riding a motorbike on on the road and you want to avoid an accident mm. it's it's critical thinking that that helps you there mm. so how do we implement that in a kid now mm. so what we notice is we notice let's say the kid is the kids are playing football mm. when the ball comes to the to the goal post and a player has it now he has to decide first of all he has to identify who his teammates are right secondly he has to see who is in the best position to score the goal mm. secondly he has to re- think how to get the ball from him to the other to his teammate mm. avoiding the other players his opponents mm. so you see there is a lot of factors here mm. that he has to do in a split second right he doesn't have time for all this if he, if he spends more than a second or two mm. somebody is going to take the ball away from his feet right so he he has to do all this without losing the ball mm. so he has a very very limited time mm. and a lot to do right a lot of his brain to function a mm. lot of thinking to be done mm. and you see initially it's it's very difficult they, mm. they, they don't even they, they they can't do it because mm. they they don't they, they've not, never done this before yeah. so most of the time initially they lose the ball between their feet mm. but if you notice in a in a few weeks mm. they've got they 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 are putting their critical thinking to use mm. and you see how well they pass they pass it to the right mm. uh, teammate they pass it through the right opponents sometimes mm. they pass it through through his legs through the legs sometimes they use, they use various other skills mm. that only proves mm. that their critical thinking is at work mm. so sir uh, you kind of make them do all these skill based drills and also things that hand eye coordination and uh, you know also the drills that sharpen their mind so and uh, w- once they kind of spend their time in the camp and uh, you know over the period of time the parents also see the difference and uh, share i was talking to when in this morning i was talking to a few parents and they were uh, you know quite delighted with the kind of uh, changes that they see in the kids and uh, you know uh, what kind of feedback do you receive from the parents uh, you know with, who went uh, of the kids who underwent these camps yeah so first i would like to tell you that in this academy of ours mm. we don't only focus on physical development mm. or we don't only focus on the game mm. we focus on overall development of a child yeah now we want the child not only to be physically fit mm. we want him to be mentally strong mm. we also want him to have a good attitude mm. because i always say 
if you have a good attitude, you will reach a good altitude in life. Hmm. Your altitude that you reach in life depends on the attitude you have. And the very basics to get a good attitude is a good gratitude. This is this is uh, this is the way I put it. Hmm. So we teach the children the basics of gratitude. You know, just being thankful for small small things. Hmm. You will you won't you won't realize hmm. be- because because par- children take it for granted. Yeah. They they expect that their parents are supposed to do these things for them, and there's no big deal. Hmm. But when you tell the child how much the parent is sacrificing for him or her, mm. how much the parent is doing for them, mm. how much of sacrifices they have to go through themselves, mm. putting so many things aside for, 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 for themselves mm. to do this for the children, various aspects, you know, mm. right from sometimes washing their clothes, mm. right from a kid mm. preparing food for them, cleaning the house, no matter what, mm. it ultimately something is done for you by your parents. Right. So we tell them, you know, how blessed you are, how mm. lucky you are, mm. how, you know, just see what your parents are doing for you. Mm. This begins to get them to think. Mm. Now they start thinking, you know, they, they, they took it for granted mm. up to this point. Now they begin to think, yes, my parents are doing so much. Then they start, they, the attitude changes towards their parents. Mm. Their gratitude becomes more. They, there are many parents who came to me and said, you know, my child, I can't help but thank you so much to see the tremendous transformation in my child. Mm. So I said, like, you know, just tell me what, what changed or what, what change has come. Mm. And they told me that, first of all, he took everything for granted earlier. Mm. Now every small thing, he comes and thanks us. Right. So that's one of the changes. Mm. Another thing, we teach our children mm. to be a good teammate. Yeah. So we teach them teamwork, not only in the sport, not only on the field, but we tell them, you are a teammate in the house as well. Mm. Your family is a team. Mm. If you are allowing your parents to do something and you are sitting back, you are not a good teammate. Mm. So we give them examples. And they ask questions. They say, how can I be a teammate? You know, they're kids. So they come up with some kiddish questions as well. Mm. So sometimes they ask me, how can I be a teammate? We don't play a game in the house. (laughs) So then I have to give them examples. You know, it's not a game in the house. It's a different kind of team. Mm. So I give them an example. Like, let's say your dad is cleaning his car or he's cleaning his bike. And if you're sitting and watching him and playing with your phone while he's cleaning his car, that's not a good teammate. So they ask, what do I do? Go and help him. Mm. So you just we tell him go and help him and at least ask him. Mm. Helping your dad is a good teammate. Playing with your phone while your dad is working is not a good teammate. <laughs> when your mom is cooking in the kitchen, mm. she might need some just a basic help pass to pass a spoon or pass a a, a, a kind of plate or something like that. Right. Just be part of the team. Yeah. So you know these things went into the children's mind, mm. and the change not only came on the on the ground and in the physical aspect. Mm. The feedback started coming from the parents that you know everything. Every time the parent gets up to do something, the child is there asking, "Can I help you?" Mm. So these kind of a transformations, what the what the parents call, yeah. was tremendous. And not only that, we focus and teach the children the right uh, nutrition to eat. Mm. We always tell the children. Do not eat what is tasty or what you like. Mm. Eat what is what is what you require, what your body requires. Mm. And we give them various examples. Mm. You know, one of the examples, and these examples really set in their mind very well. Mm. So, you know, we had many children who regularly would eat burgers and pizzas and all the aerated drinks and chocolates and sweets and all the junk food that, that our body doesn't require. Mm. So we had to come out with some various, you know, practical examples to give them Mm. for them to change their mind. Mm. So one day I I put all the kids together and asked them, how many of you like supercars? Mm. Everyone's hand went up. Every single kid's hand went up and said, we love supercars. So I said, what if somebody gives you a supercar? Will you take care of it? They said, yes. And they were screaming with joy. Yes. And (laughs) so I kept asking them, what would you do? They said, we would get up and clean it every morning and we would do this and do that. And we would really keep it well. And then I said to so which petrol bunk you would you would take your car to? They said we'll we'll find out the best petrol bunk because we want the best fuel, and uh, you know I took all I made them say whatever they wanted to say, yeah. and then I said, would you put kerosene, kerosene oil, yeah, in your supercar? They mm. said no way. They were screaming. Yeah. Why would we do that? We would not do that. Yeah. Then I got to get back and say, when you put kerosene in your supercar, that's going to destroy the the engine of your car. I said in the same way, mm. when you put a Coke in your body instead of a coconut water, mm. that is exactly what you're doing to you, to the engine in your body. 
and that is how you are destroying your body mm. so immediately you know it registers in a kid's mind because they need examples and they need an example where they something that they love yeah so immediately there is a change the next day or two days later mm. we get messages from the parents mm. my child is not looking at this stuff mm. he is not having a single coke mm. he is not eating chocolates mm. he is only eating what is good for him mm. so you see th- these are the things that we are implementing and mm. it's working right. and that is what the ultimate aim of the academy is mm. to see overall growth mm. in a child mm. to see that child growing up to be a, a, a perfect person where you know people people love to be around positive people mm. people love to be around uh, loving people mm. people love to be around people who are well with a good attitude mm. so we want these children to be loved by everyone mm. we want these children when they walk out in 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 whatever they are doing in life mm. people should realize and see that there's something different in them and it's already happening the difference and the transformation that we we want is happening in, we thought it would take a longer time but mm. it's happening far more faster than what we thought it it would take mm. so it's a great sign to us it's a great motivation to us and we are we we have a great plans for the future this is a very long term project and a plan that we are, we have in mind mm. we are targeting not even the 2028 olympics the olympics beyond that we are looking at something like the, the 30 32 olympics or, or whatever mm. so we are trying to start from here and i am very sure mm. that we are going to see a few medals by that time with mm. these kids excellent sir the uh, the kind of work that you are uh, doing now to get them started so young you know even if, if a few uh, people from this current lot and the you know future uh, you know talent hunts that you are going to do even if you, have, you know a percentage of uh, them stick to the sport and develop i think uh, the future is going to be very bright so uh, kudos to you sir uh, there uh, sir what is uh, what are the kind of uh, i i heard from uh, a few parents also that uh, you did a few sessions uh, educational sessions with you know teaching the parents as well not just the kids so what kind of uh, uh, sessions did you kind of take for parents and stuff? yeah we did various sessions with the kids mm. some of the sessions were on nutrition with the mm. parents mm. we always done a session with the parents and the kids mm. because the parents are the ones to prepare the food for the children mm. so even if the child changes his eating habits mm. and the parents are preparing something that he is not supposed to eat mm. it's not a teamwork there again that's why yeah. i say a family is a team yeah so we asked the team the family team to come and listen yeah and the parents were so amazed and amused mm. to see the nutritional value of uh, the local food that is available to us in india mm. and how beneficial it is to the body mm. and we also gave them the negative aspects of all these other things the fried stuff the aerated mm. uh, uh, drinks and uh, you know the pizzas and burgers how harmful it can be or yeah. how it can restrict not only the growth of your uh, child the growth of his physical activities and how it can also put on unnecessary weight and cause certain kind of uh, you know health issues mm. in the future by eating all this yeah and we told them if nothing comes out of your child if he doesn't win a medal at the at any level get one thing straight that he will be a healthier child yeah and you know this was amazing now mm. these were some of it then we started explaining to the parents mm. how the energy systems work in our body mm. why we need to eat the right food mm. you know if we just tell somebody don't eat that and don't mm. tell him why he's not supposed to do it mm. you know he will still doubt yeah. because he doesn't know what yeah. is right and wrong. so we i started explaining to them how the energy systems in our body work mm. how atp is produced how our body needs fuel to function mm. what our body does when it's resting mm. various aspects like this we keep having these kind of workshops and telling the parents mm. and they are really amused and they because i mean not every every parent needs to know these things yeah because we are interested in sport because we are coaches mm. this is a part of our subject and mm. because of the interest i have mm. i do more research on these things and i gain a little knowledge here mm. so it's not necessary for everyone to know but when they actually know mm. when their child is becoming a sportsman mm. and these things are so important mm. the combination of bringing making a sportsman out of your child mm. and you knowing 
the benefits of the sport mm. and what to eat and what not to eat and how your body functions mm. makes a big difference yeah definitely sir and uh, you know all i think uh, all of us are incredibly lucky you know the parents and the kids are incredibly lucky f- to have this kind of knowledge being shared by you who is actually a faculty uh, uh, who teaches the national in- at national institute of uh, sports and the uh, all uh, you know uh, help uh, the all the cfi coaches teach all the cfi coaches so you know the kind of uh, knowledge the wealth of knowledge you have you know they're ga- directly getting from you that they are i think uh, incredibly lucky there when i was talking to some of the parents uh, as the kids were go, you know participating in the races uh, one of the things that uh, you know they talked about is uh, the one parent was talking about i you know i don't mind that uh, uh, i i am not uh, getting my kid here with the aim of getting him a medal or something but he gets to learn so much by falling and getting up and you know dealing with failure and all that and i i i thought that was very poignant and i think that is something that they picked up uh, from you so talk talk a little bit about that uh, aspect of uh, sport yeah so one of the things that we do uh, at the academy is mm. you if, if a child has fear in him mm. it is very difficult for him to take up any kind of a sport because sport involves a lot of courage mm. you courage and fa- fear don't go together mm. because if you have fear you've lost the race on the very start line mm. i always say this fear is nothing it mm. is i i always i put it like this f e a r is false evidence appearing real mm. there's nothing there but yeah. it's just false evidence that makes you scared mm. so one of the things we do to get the fear out is i as i said we put them in group riding we make them walk up the 48 uh, the 38 degree uh, track w- when the velodrome is not being used for cycling mm. we actually make them walk up at the steepest bank mm. and we make them walk up holding the railing and come down again mm. at a at a much uh, lower degree mm. initially nobody does it mm. they are too scared mm. the parents are too scared to allow their child to do it also mm. because it's a 7 meter track 7 mm. meters is almost 21 feet mm. if they fall from 21 feet mm. it it can be dangerous yeah. but we take safety as a very prime aspect to us mm. so two or three of us actually stand mm. uh, at the low of, of the track mm. so even if he comes rolling down we are ready to catch him mm. and see that he doesn't come down to the concrete mm. we take all these precautions mm. but at, till now we mm. never had to really use it mm. and we do it ourselves mm. you know we do it because we've been doing it for a, for a long time so mm. we sh- we show them mm. and it's just a matter of few maybe minutes so within a half an hour mm. the kids begin to get it mm. now they've lost that fear yeah and what we noticed here is the greatest thing is the parents initially who did not want their child to do that mm. now we got a few parents saying we want to try it mm. so see the change now yeah. this is what i am talking about this yeah. is this is change yeah. the parent did not want their child to do it because they thought it's too dangerous mm. now when they see their child do it so easily mm. the the very same thing that they put that put fear into them mm. they not only allow their child to do it they want to do it themselves yeah. so this is what we are we are we are working on mm. to get that fear out to 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 get a child you know there are many times where a child falls mm. initially what what used to happen is every time uh, the, uh, there was a minor accident or a minor crash mm. all the parents would come running to mm. support that child mm. and they would call other parents to mm. come to help mm. so the very you know the first time we seen that and we have to you have to be very very careful of dealing with not only children with the parents mm. the, the idea and the motive we have is do not hurt anyone you know mm. we whatever you do do it in a proper manner right so then we had to explain to them the next time a kid falls please allow us to do it our way mm. so they said okay mm. so they didn't expect our way to be this way mm. <laughs> so there was a crash mm. and as usual the parents were running to towards the child and calling others to come and help and we said move away mm. don't come just go away mm. and they were very surprised and neither did we go right up to the child we went to a certain distance and we said get up mm. stand on your feet pick up your bike mm. get on the cycle and continue with the race mm. 
and you know initially uh, maybe there are one or two kids who who just uh, hmm. make a little a little bit of fuss yeah but they got the message hmm. now you when you make a child do something much against his wish or much much against his will hmm. you have to compensate that with something else as well hmm. so we came out with this plan every time somebody has a crash hmm. they wake they stand on their feet get hmm. back on their cycle hmm. it doesn't matter if he doesn't win hmm. if he just gets back on the cycle and completes the the race hmm. or completes the whatever training program we had that day hmm. it's the duty of every other parent there and every everyone assembled there to give him a clap for what he's done hmm. so this appreciation hmm. paid a great uh, dividend to to us because hmm. now what happened is we didn't have to tell the child anything every hmm. time he fell hmm. before we can even tell him something hmm. he was up on his feet back on the cycle ready to go and and going hmm. because now they got the message you know yeah. this is this is and we tell them why hmm. I, we tell them this is what a sportsman is all about you mm. know a sportsman is not when he falls to his f- we give them examples mm. we say in in a in a boxing match mm. if you see a boxing match mm. probably your op- the opponent he falls four or five times mm. and then he gets up on his feet again mm. and there are many incidents where the guy who falls four or five times ultimately wins the wins the the, the match right so that is what a sportsman is it's not when you fall to sit where you are or mm. lie where you are mm. it's when you fall get back on your feet come back stronger hmm. we tell them when you fall come back stronger hmm. because you lost a few seconds you have to come back stronger to cover those few seconds right. so we make them stronger hmm. the basic idea is not to look at an obstacle as an obstacle hmm. we always say if an obstacle comes your way hmm. use it as an opportunity hmm. so we teach them how to use we we give them examples and we tell them you know if if the if there's a hurdle that if there's a uh, something in the front of you mm. use that as an opportunity there are various examples we also give mm. of how you can use these opportunities and how you can because we also teach them positive talking mm. because i always tell them you cannot say negative things mm. and expect positive results mm. you can never i always say this you can never never say negative things mm. and expect positive results and they ask for examples mm. so i always tell them let's say you you tell yourself i can never be a champion i can never win a medal i can never win that race you already lost the race mm. you are never going to win so that is negative yet if you see on the other hand i must win this race i will win this race i am made to win this race you are just a matter of time we may not be you are, might not win the first or second race you are just on it's it's in you are in due course to mm. win a race it's just a matter of time where you will win the next race so we teach them positive thinking positive talking because we all we always tell them your speech is what you think mm. if you have a negative thought in your mind mm. ultimately your mouth will speak negatively mm. if you have a positive thought in your mind your mouth will speak positively yeah it is what you have in your mind that actually comes out of your mouth mm. so if you want to say the right thing you have to think the right thing mm. so we teach them what what to think mm. you know think positively mm. start thinking positively if you had a negative thought change that into a positive thought mm. so this is how we try to get them to change their thinking mm. change their speech become positive mm. when you say positive things you know there were many kids who said i can't wake up in the morning mm. i said that's a negative thought mm. say i will wake up in the morning no mm. matter what i will wake up 5 o'clock in the morning mm. we tell them this and they come back on a few days and the parents also come back and say sir your words are working mm. he, i don't have to wake him up he's waking up mm. so you know the great thrill and the joy for us to see that when we are implementing these things it's actually producing fruit and being fruitful right Yeah, this is uh, you know really gold sir uh, for all the kids and everyone the future champions the that sort of attitude that you nurture from uh, an early age is really uh, critical so sir uh, if people uh, want to get into uh, get their kids into cycling what is the earliest they can uh you know get them into get them started and how how do they go about uh, taking for uh, you know taking them into sport yeah i would suggest that a 6 year old kid is ready for any sport mm. cycling is one of the best sports i would say it's an olympic sport mm. it has a great uh, it's an individual sport mm. where you if you have individual talent it you you cannot but hide it hmm. you nobody can there, there is no foul play in an indi- indi- individual event hmm. maybe in a team event team event it's difficult to to choose a team maybe hmm. 
somebody will be ne neglected somebody but in a sport like this where you have your individual talent and your individual individual ability which is an olympic sport i think it's one of the best sports and coming to it at the age of 6 mm. will definitely really help you because as i said if you want to become an olympic champion or if you want to win a medal at the world it is not only about training it's it is a lot of other aspects as i said your your thinking positive thinking positive speaking right eating right training right recovery mm. as as you know as a coach mm. training is all about overload mm. recovery yeah. and progression mm. if you don't if you if you miss out on any one of these aspects if mm. you miss out on training proper training mm. if you miss out on nutrition if you miss out on recovery you will never see progression right so it it's it these are stepping stones to progression mm. so we teach the children you know mm. if you want to see progression this is what you do mm. you you cannot get there is no sh shortcut in sport mm. so we teach them this and i think the right age is 6 years old when you are 6 years old and mm. if anybody who wants to come and join our academy mm. they are most welcome mm. we have our classes from 6 to 8 every morning at the usmania university sports authority of telangana uh, velodrome it's one of it's a beautiful facility we are there from 6 to 8 except the sundays and any holiday because the velodrome is closed but you they can come and meet us there we have our phone numbers we have a website we have uh, we conduct a lot of uh, tournaments for these uh, children and one of the best achievements i think uh, in the last few months that i can talk about is uh, i also approached the, the national cycling federation to include an age group of 10 to 12 at the national level mm. but uh, the cycling federation of india has uh, a great responsibility of safety mm. and keeping safety in mind they said uh, it's a little bit difficult uh, to do it at that age because the 12 to 14 itself they have a lot of crashes and there's a lot of uh, effort that is put into safety mm. so i said uh, however they said mm. at, you can do it at the state level and okay. you can also issue state level certificates mm. which they don't have any objection mm. so then i started i approached uh, the president of the telangana cycling association mm. we've also invited him on various occasions to be part of our programs mm. and he's seen it we have learned one thing mm. we if we, if we just talk about what we do mm. i think it's not enough mm. people need to see what what we are doing and mm. that is one of the reasons i invited you today mm. because i want people to i want to be transparent mm. i want people to see what we are doing mm. so they get a first hand information mm. and they know what we are doing and what we are up to yeah. so i approached um, the telangana Pres the cycling association president and i explained to him mm. and i told him everything and uh, we invited him for a function it was the closing of the camp mm. and it was a great surprise to us at the camp he said uh, that uh, the telangana cycling association is approved mm. of not only a lotting of conducting of the inter district cup state championship to the dr maxwell travel cycling welfare association but he is also uh, uh, said that he based on my uh, my request he is also permitting the age groups of 6 to 8 uh 6 to 3 age groups mm -hmm. between 6 to 12 years to take part and state level certificates will be issued and that is the reason why we took the children out to get a first hand feel of the the surface of the track of the road mm -hmm. that they are going to ride on mm -hmm. uh, today was was almost the first day for every child you see out there to mm -hmm. ride on a national highway mm -hmm. i think that was a great achievement yeah. it is a service road it's a, it's a kind of a dead end so we had to do a lot of survey as well mm. to to find a safe road mm. and ultimately we found this this road uh, which is fairly safe mm. there is hardly any traffic uh, mm. on the road mm. and we have a lot of parents there to help us mm. in conducting this mm. so today was the first time that almost every child that you see in there between the age of 6 to to 12 years mm. this was the very first time that they went on to a highway and yeah. rode a cycle and they were thrilled yeah. they were really thrilled yeah. they asking for one more session on sunday yeah so you know we are planning another session on sunday now this is what uh, you know when the children and parents ask for more mm. that's a great sign yeah you know that proves that something that you are doing is what they like yeah. and here at the academy when i say we are training 6 year old kids mm. there's a lot of uh, um, thinking that you have to do when you are training a 6 year old kid mm. you have to make him want to come back you mm. want to you have to make him love what he is doing mm. you have to make him want to come back for more and more of the, of the physical activity because physical activity is not easy mm. because these some of them did not do any kind of physical activity before that mm. they are, it's a 6 year old kid i mean yeah. he can hardly sit on a cycle yeah 
and if you see the skills they have now mm. it's amazing yeah. it's just amazing it it really amazes me sometimes mm. to see how fast a child can actually learn and put on so much of skill you, if you seen them riding today yeah. riding on the national highway they were riding at a speed of i think they uh, they they touched Some at a the time they touched almost 20 kmph on these indian made bikes yeah. of course there was a little uh, decline there yeah. but for a 6 year old kid to handle a bike at the speed of 20 is yeah. not easy yeah, they, but they they were doing it taking a u turn yeah. uh, you know it, it was great to see them yeah. so that is that is what is so satisfying satisfying and motivating to us yeah some of them were quite fast and you know I, as you rightly said they are they learn at a very tremendously fast pace and uh, they are like sponges at this age right to observe everything I, I don't know if you noticed, there was a girl who was actually five years old. Uh, she was so eager to take part with the bigger age group. Uh, she picked up a cycle uh, and came on the starting line, uh, requesting me to allow her to start. Uh, <laughs> so I asked her, do you know how to use the brakes? Uh, she said, no. <laughs> so I told her, did you ever use the brake before? She said, no. Uh, I said, how are you going to ride? I will ride, she said. <laughs> so, you know, you have to be very careful. Yeah. So I did not want to dis disappoint her. Yeah. I said, okay, I am going to race with you mm. the next... Let me finish with this. Yeah. I'm going to give you a better cycle. Yeah. Actually, I was looking for a smaller cycle. Yeah. I'm going to give you a better cycle and I'm going to teach you how to break yeah. and I am going to come with you racing. Yeah. So she said, yes, she was waiting. And so I, I had to ful fulfill the, my promise as well. Yeah. So immediately after the race, yeah. I went back to her and said, come on, we are going to race. Yeah. So I put on the cycle and I started running besides her, teaching her how to use the brake. Yeah. And you won't believe, I think it took her three to four minutes and she got how to use the brake. Yeah. I was running besides her and telling her, use the brake. First time she was too harsh on it. Yeah. Then she was, it was just a few minutes she yeah. got how to use the brake. Yeah. So this is how we deal with children. I, I saw the I saw you running uh, uh, beside her and uh, it, it was beautiful to watch. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a great example of how, uh, how good you are with the, you know, teaching, uh, you know, these kids. It, it, it was beautiful to watch. So, sir, uh, if these, uh, you know, f at, at national level, there are, uh, the category starts from 12 yes. and above. Yes. So, 12 to 14 and then under 18. Under 16. 12 to 14, 12. 14 to 16, 16 to 18. Uh, okay. Under 23 and men and women are lead. Yeah. So, this is for uh, all events on track and road, right? Yes. Including mountain bike. Including mountain bike. So, uh if anyone who is listening, these these are the categories uh, at the nationals, but you can get the kids started, uh, you know, as early as six. And if you are anywhere near Hyderabad, or, you know, in Hyderabad, uh, there there is no better person than uh, Maxwell sir to you know handle the kids and teach them all these right. So you can use. Uh, the academy's uh, facilities to uh, get your kids ready for that. You know, when when dealing with kids, mm. uh, we were, we had to we had to do a lot of thinking in the drawing room mm. because we said these kids are going to come to participate for the first time. Especially when we had this talent identification competition, mm. we said now every child is going to come with a different cycle. Mm. Some are going to come with come with very good cycles. Mm. Some are going to come with with. You, the cycles in not a very good condition mm. and some of them won't even have cycles. Mm. Now, how do we give all the e children an equal opportunity? Mm. That was one of the questions that we had in mind. Mm. So we came up with this idea, we will provide the cycles. Mm. Even if you have your own cycle, mm. you will ride our cycle mm. because then what happens is it makes it a lot convenient for the parents to come bring their children without carrying the cycle. Mm. Now, some pay, all, not all parents have cars. Mm. Some have two-wheelers. Mm. So, bringing your child, your six-year-old child with mm. a cycle on a two-wheeler mm. is just impossible. Mm. So, we looked at all these aspects. We wanted good participation. We wanted them to come and have a feel of, of what a cycle a cycling tournament is all about. Mm. So, we decided that we will provide the cycles. We mm. purchased the cycles from decathlon mm. we thought that these cycles are the most suitable for these age mm. the model was rock rider 100 uh, mm. uh, 24 inch wheels mm. so we purchased the cycles and i think that was a great opportunity because every single child had an equal opportunity mm. as you know as a coach using a big gear for these yes such young children 
yeah. actually damages their muscles. Mm. And it's not good. It's not even allowed at the, at the international level. UCI has a gear restriction. So we wanted to make the children benefit the maximum out of the cycle after cycling, not to damage them. Mm. So we picked this cycle because it has a very low gear ratio. The cadence would be more and they, the power that they execute on the pedal will be much lower and much less, which is actually needed for a child. Mm. So we picked these cycles. They all had equal opportunities, although the seat adjustment had to be there. Mm. So we there was a lot of manual work mm. because every time you change the, 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 the rider on the cycle, you have to adjust the seat. Mm. And we there were a lot of... Uh, nuts that were destroyed in this process mm -hmm. so then we we came out with a new idea we started using the quick release uh, kind of systems to lower and higher the seat mm -hmm. so we have to go with the you know we have to use our own discretion sometimes mm -hmm. to make it easier and make it more beneficial for the for the rider mm -hmm. and i think these things by doing these things really helped and uh, it really motivated pe people and that's the, that is the reason why we actually could make an impact mm. in the in the in the cycling yeah. community or in the cycling uh, sport mm. it is it is incredibly hard to uh, i mean the it is not very easy to deal with kids uh, at, you know much at much younger age like uh, you know less than 10 from 6 6 and onwards so the kind of uh, effort that uh, your team and you put in is tremendous and I, I had a first hand experience of uh, watching that uh, today um, but sir when you are looking at nationals and um, for the various age groups let us uh, take uh, track yeah. okay and what are the kind of what are the kind of uh, excuse yeah so what are the kind of events uh, and distances that uh, are there for the various age groups? Yeah. Now, if you're talking about track cycling, mm. and if you're talking about the age group between 12 to 14 mm. and uh, 14 to 16, they have uh, the individual time trial, mm. which is a 500 meter time trial. Okay. So it depending on the, on the size of the track, if it's a 333 meter track, it's one and a half lap. Mm. So it's a standing start. And it's a, it's an individual time trial, which means it's riding against the clock. Mm. Each rider rides individually and they are clocked. And the best timing, the person who clocks the best timing will be the winner. And subsequently, the next best timing would be second, third, and so on. Mm. The next event for this age group, 12 to 14, is the two-kilometer individual pursuit. Now, the two-kilometer individual pursuit is an individual event again, but two riders take part at the same time at either ends of the track. Mm. It is called the pursuit line. If you notice in the middle of both the straights, mm. the, the, the lowest degree of the track, which is, which is around 12 degrees, mm. do, in the middle of, of that entire straight, you have a red line on, either, on both sides. Mm. That is called the pursuit line. And you have one rider from which we call the, the home stretch mm. and the other or the opposite stretch. So they both of them take a start at the same time based on the whistle or a gun. Mm. The starter stands in the middle of the track. The reason for the starter to stand in the middle of the track is sound takes time to travel. Right. So if he's standing closer to one rider than the other, the whistle or the gun will reach the rider who's closer to him before it reaches the other rider. Right. So these are the technical aspects. Mm. Many people ask these questions. Mm. Why does he stand in the center? Yeah. So this is the reason. Yeah. To see that sound travels equally to both the riders and they reach, it reaches. Of course, we are talking about a very, very micro fraction of a second. Yeah. But then why do why do you give why do we want to give even that micro fraction of a second to a rider? Yeah. Let us be fair and equal. Yeah. So that is why the, the uh, uh, starter starts from the middle of the track mm. to give both the riders equal opportunity and fair fair play game. Mm. So that is in in the 14 to 16 age groups you have the same events hmm. and uh, 500 in, meters and two two, two kilometer, kilometer individual, pursuit individual okay. pursuit yeah, yeah. and uh, the 18 hmm. the, the 18 years hmm. like 16 to 18 year group hmm. in that you have a one kilometer time trial hmm. 
you have a three kilometer individual pursuit. Okay. It's the, the individual time trial is the same. Mm. The distance is just doubled. Mm. The individual pursuit is the same where two riders take a start. The yeah. distance is, is one kilometer more. Oh, yeah. They also have a kind of a um, group race, mm. which which is called a scratch race mm. or, or a mass start. Mm. It's a, a, a scratch race. They also have a carrying race, mm. which is very interesting. Mm. The motorbike sets the pace. Mm. It starts giving you a kind of drafting advantage or a, sets the pace mm. at 30 kilometers an hour. Mm. And it moves out after three and a half laps on the on the velodrome. Mm. And it from 30, it brings the speed up to 50 and moves out. Mm. And the riders are left to, to race mm. after that. It's a very interesting race. And the good thing about this race is India has got a world championship medal. Mm. And if you've seen that world championship, Iso was the one who won the, won the silver. It was excellent to watch him. Yeah. He won it. He lost the gold, in fact, mm. by a fraction of a second. Mm. Yeah. In fact, if you ask me, there was very, very little difference, mm. not less than a half wheel. Yeah. So this is one of the events. And mm. India has always been doing well mm. in the track events in the recent past, mm. much better than the road events. Yeah. So these are the events. And of course, for the men elite, you have mm. the points race. You have the 4,000 meters individual pursuit. So after 18, it is men elite. Yes. After 18, once you, you cross 18, you mm. come in the men elite or the women elite category okay. in the track. So uh, on road, there is under 23, but it is not there uh, in, in, track. Yeah, in track. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You have the under 23 category mm. in in road. You also have the under 23 category in mount in MTB. Okay. Oh. So, sir, uh, yeah, please go ahead with the events uh, for elite. In track, mm. yeah. In track for the men elite, you have the individual time trial. You have the individual pursuit. You have the points race. You have the Kirin race. Mm. And uh, now they are also planning to introduce the Madison. Mm. The Madison is nothing but a points race, mm. which is done with two riders, okay. like a team. Mm. One rider at all given time is, is part of the competition, mm. while the other rider is is taking a kind of recovery mm. on, the, on the upper side of the track. Mm. When that rider wants to change or switch mm. uh, the, the, the power, he pulls the rider into the into the, the race and he relaxes mm. it's kind of a teamwork where one is putting an effort and one is recovering mm. and this keeps going on and there's no limit you can keep changing as number of times you want mm. so that is the madison that would be introduced into the track events from the coming nationals mm. there are also team events mm. now there is a team sprint mm. which three riders take part this is another very interesting event mm. which we also have a medal at the world world championship mm. Now, these three riders take a start. Mm. Each rider takes a start with a 1.5 meter gap from, from one rider to the other rider. Mm. Three riders are parallel besides one another. Mm. The front wheel should not go beyond the, uh, the red line. Mm. They take a start. Each rider takes one lap and moves out mm. from the track to the upper side of the track. Mm. The second rider does his lap mm. and the third rider the second rider moves out and then the third rider tapes, takes his lap mm. and the last rider mm. timing the timing is clocked on the after when the last rider reaches the the, the starting point of his uh, event mm. they also have two teams take part at a time like the individual pursuit mm. from opposite ends of the track mm. now here the technical aspects of this is mm. that the even the the idea of having this team event is to take your team along with you. Right. Let's say the first rider takes a very fast start mm. and the second rider cannot keep up with the first rider. Mm. So actually, if you see, the second rider will be riding two laps mm. because the person in the front always has to use an additional effort mm. because he's facing the wind resistance. Right. The rider behind him mm. gets a a, a kind of advantage mm. because the first rider is cutting the wind and creating a kind of draft. Mm. Now, there's a lot of technical aspects even while drafting, mm. how it happens, and it's very interesting. Mm. You know, the second rider gets the advantage. So the idea in this team event is, mm. while the first rider is putting all his effort, exerting, mm. the next two riders have to actually have to take advantage mm. of the benefit of drafting, mm. stay as close to his back wheel as possible, mm. take the maximum advantage, mm. and then you do the same thing when his turn comes, mm. 
this goes on till the last rider hmm. and in that case you get the maximum benefit out of your team hmm. and you will definitely be able to do a better timing hmm. so that is the the team sprint hmm. you also have a very specified 15 meter area in which you have to move out from the track hmm. if you move out before that or you move out after that hmm. your team will be disqualified so these are the technical aspects of this event okay you also have the team pursuit hmm. the team pursuit is of 4 kilometers hmm. it's it's uh, four riders to start hmm. three three riders are allowed to finish hmm. in this all the three riders have to finish together hmm. because the third man's timing will be clocked hmm. so if two two riders finish and the third rider finishes after 20 seconds hmm. your time will lose your team will lose 20 seconds because the time is stopped hmm. on the third rider hmm. now this is not is is a little bit different from an uh, team sprint hmm. because in a team sprint the rider moves out and hmm. does not join the team again hmm. in a team pursuit the rider from the first position that was taking all the all the load by taking the wind upon himself hmm. moves from that position and comes to the last position and that's how he gets a little bit of recovery hmm. and by the time he gets a chance again he has three riders in the front of him so he has enough three laps or if they are taking half lap hmm. he has that much of time to recover hmm. and come back with a with a with a re, uh, kind of uh, recovered energy to take another lead hmm. and this is how you you form a good team and this is how you get the best out of your team hmm. very interesting uh, the team sprint and the team pursuit and uh, individual pursuit uh, four kilometer individual pursuit and uh, uh, individual time trial yes. uh, what is the distance of individual time trial for uh, elite men it is 1 kilometer 1 kilometer there is one more event mm. in, for for the men the under 18 mm. as well as the men elite mm. which is called the the sprint mm. it is the 200 meter sprint okay it's another very interesting event mm. it is always the fastest event mm. because it's a short distance it's just 200 meters mm. now in the qualifying rounds mm. each rider rides individually mm. and their 200 meter timing is clocked mm. we have a marking on the track mm. we have a start line and a finish line for the purpose of the 200 meters mm. so they they get three laps to so they build their speed mm. using the advantage of the banking mm. going to the right to the upper side mm. of the of the banking taking the advantage of that banking mm making a kind of dive mm. taking the advantage of all that they can get mm. to generate the maximum speed mm. the idea here is to reach because it's a short distance of 200 meters mm. the idea here is to touch the start line with maximum speed mm. it is not to come into the line and then uh, generate speed mm. you're going to lose timing there mm. the idea is to start way before the start of the 200 meters mm. by the time you reach that line you should be at max power mm. max speed mm. and that is when you get the best timing mm. then you, depending on the number of riders they you qualify either they take the first 16 to qualify or the first 28 to qualify mm. and then you are put in in pairs mm. and then after that the pairing and as you come to the semi finals the quarter finals semi finals and finals mm. it becomes pairing and that is the best of threes mm. you always have a best of three match when you're in a pair mm. it's a very interesting event and it's a very fast event mm. and there's a lot of tactics in that as well mm. because sometimes for those who have seen mm. a sprint event some many people ask me this question mm. why do they do a standstill yeah a standstill is Track something stand. where, where a rider goes and tries to now here it's supposed to be a race that goes fast but at sometimes you see a rider trying to slow your opponent down mm. trying to get his uh, cycle to a stationary position mm. which is called a standstill mm. he's in one position stationary there uh, yet on the cycle without his legs touching mm. so this is a question that keeps coming very often to yeah, me yeah. now here again as i was explaining to you yeah. that the rider in the front mm. has to take the the wind upon him mm. now this is one aspect mm. your your opponent always wants you to do the hard part mm. because it make to make it easier for him mm. that is one aspect the second aspect is you always when you have your opponent in the front of you mm. you can see him better right in a sprint event mm. if you take your eyes off your opponent mm. for a second mm. and if you if you realize that he's is past you or he's taken a jump mm. which is Two seconds later, mm. you've lost two seconds there already. Yeah. And at sprint, you are, you do it. The, the best riders do it around ten seconds. Mm. If you lose one second and ten seconds, you <laughs> probably lose. You you're out of the three places. Yeah. 
So that is why your opponent always wants to have an eye on you. Hmm. The best view for him is for you to be in the front of him. Right. So that is why they do the standstills because he wants you to go in the front. Hmm. He wants to see what you're doing. So the moment you get off the, the saddle, hmm. he knows you're about to jump. Hmm. Without losing even a split second, hmm. he's ready to do the same thing. Yeah. So, you know, by having, yet if the rider does it from the back, hmm. by the time you turn and get your eyes to see him, hmm. he's already put eight or ten pedals and right. he's already gained a, a kind of a 10 meter gap between hmm. you and him. Yeah. And to gain 10 meters in 200 meters hmm. in such a short distance, is it's a very difficult task. Yeah. So, every split second in a sprint matters hmm. and that is why you, it's a it's a very good position to be behind your opponent, mm. to see to have both your eyes on your opponent, mm. not wasting a single second or yeah. a split second. Mm. The moment you see him get off his seat, you're yeah. ready to sprint with him. Yeah. That is why they have a toss. Yeah. Who takes the first first lane? Yeah. So if you're unlucky in losing the toss, then you have to use your skills yeah. in a standstill or in a, whatever skills you have to try yeah. and get your opponent to go in the front of you. Yeah. That's another interesting event. Yeah. So the very uh, track has so many uh, events that are really, really interesting and tactical. What were uh, your specialties, sir? What were your uh, events? This was my my speci speciality. In fact, I held the national record in this event for many, many years. Yeah. I broke my own record three times at the national level. And this is the event that yeah. I came 0 0.04 seconds close to the Olympic record. Wow. So uh, I clocked this timing in 1982. That was the first time I broke a national record. Yeah. And that timing at that national record was 0 0.04 seconds behind the Moscow Olympic record. The Moscow Olympics was held in 1980. Two years later, I came zero. That's It's a very, very, you know, a second is split into uh, in, in, into uh, thousand, a thousand. Thousand, yeah. Into a thousand. Mm -hmm. Point zero, zero, zero point four. zero four seconds is is a very 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 close incredibly uh, small would, if, if you if you practically see that it would have been a photo finish yeah, yeah you, it would have been even difficult to to recognize it in the photo in the photo finish. yeah so that's how close and this was my pet event yeah. and that's why I get excited even talking about it <laughs> so uh, this is uh, this was my event and I held another record is mm. uh, in the one thousand meters time trial mm. in the one kilometer time trial. Yeah. I, I broke the record in the one kilometer time trial as well. And I went on to break this record three times uh, again and again mm. in both these events. Mm. And the record that I still hold today is mm. I was the national champion for 10 consecutive years. Oh my now, God. From my time till now, there is nobody <laughs> who has been the national champion for 10 consecutive years in any one event or any of the both events. So that record, of course, my timings have been broken. Yeah. But uh, this record of being the national champion for 10 consecutive years is still not broken. So wh what is the, uh, when did that 10-year period start, sir? That was from 1980 to 1990. That is incredible, sir. So from 1980 to 1990, I went on to win every national championship. At that time, now you have a restriction of individual events where you have two events. Yeah. But in my time, we had no restriction. So we rode almost every event. So I almost have more than 250 medals in the span of 10 years My in, in various events. Uh, there's a lot, there's some information on Wikipedia and yeah. Google as well. Yeah. So I had a real good career. Yeah. And uh, the equipment we used yeah. was was far, far below. We yeah. didn't have this kind of equipment in my days. Right. You have the carbon bikes, you have the carbon wheels, yeah. you have so much of good equipment here. Yeah. And uh, it's great to see yeah. uh, better equipment coming into the sport. Mm. But sir, the, the kind of records that you held is just mind-blowing. 10 consecutive years and over 250 medals is just mind-blowing. So wh what if, what was training like back in your day? Like, uh, you know, did, were, did, did you predominantly train on the velodrome or was it, was the velodrome there uh, at uh, Hyderabad at that time? Yeah, the surprising thing is we did not have a velodrome at that time. Uh, I was a track national champion without a track. <laughs> so we used to train on the road uh, and we would pick a stretch and we would do our sprint sessions. We would, we would do our individual time trial sessions on one stretch of the road. Uh, we would prefer to use an inclined road, you know, uh, maybe use a little more effort, uh, make it a little more difficult. I had a very good coach as well. His name was is Mumtaz Ahmed. He's uh, still he's still in America. Hmm. He's very old now though. Uh, I'm still in touch with him. Uh, 
and he was a very cruel coach <laughs> we call him cruel because you know sometimes there were there were times that i would feel that i'm going to lose my life you know i, I would feel that my heart is going to stop uh, i would tell him ustad mai mar ja raha hu you know i would tell him he would be on the bike he had a yesd in those days uh, he would ride my competitor was his bike <laughs> yeah, so indeed. so he would he would expect me to to keep up with his bike uh-huh. and to beat his bike and every time i increase the speed he would increase it by raising the <laughs> throttle and i would come to a stage where i would tell him ustad i'm dying mai mar ja raha hu he would tell me cross the line and die so, <laughs> he would tell me oh line ke baad mai mar ja <laughs> so that is the kind of coach i had uh-huh. he put me through rigorous training yeah and the the thing is i had one thing mm. that i'm teaching my students today mm. positive thinking mm. positive talking mm. and nothing could hold me back mm. from winning a medal mm. there was a time mm. you know i come from a family of four cyclists out of five brothers mm. three of them are international cyclists mm. there was a time at a nationals mm. that my leg came out in a, in one of the events mm. and because of that mm. my brother mm. who actually would would have come fourth mm. because i lost out in one event mm. he came third mm. so my coach told me see everything happens for the best mm. by your foot coming out in this event your brother got a third place uh-huh. so i told him even if my father comes on the start line <laughs> i will not leave him <laughs> so you know he's my father at home i have all due respect for him but on the start line uh-huh. i have no i want to win no matter who is on that line <laughs> so that is the kind of motivation i would come with and i meant it uh-huh. i mean even if there was anybody besides me on the line i would not leave him for anything yeah. i would definitely want to overtake him right. so i was not at all happy mm. that my leg came out and my brother won that didn't that was not even interesting to me uh-huh. how can i you know i wanted to be there i wanted to win right so that's the kind of motivation i had and i keep telling my we i had nothing in fact when i started cycling mm. i uh, this uh, this is a different uh, uh, kind of uh, yeah would, yeah would you, actually okay let's get there this is yeah. this would really motivate some yeah. of the children yeah you know i grew up in a family mm. of six siblings mm. we were five brothers one sister mm. my dad was the earn, only earning member in the family mm. life was very difficult for us mm. you know one earning member mm. six children mother and father eight of us mm. taking care of our education our clothing our food mm. was a very difficult task mm. so having good nutrition in those days mm. was not even in my book yeah having a, a kind of sports wear mm. sports go a good sports shoes mm. or a cycling shorts mm. or a cycling jersey was no way in my book mm. i never even dreamt of it mm. but i yet wanted to become a champion right. i didn't even have a cycle mm. how i started my career this mm. is a little bit interesting mm. i was around uh, 11 or 12 years old mm. and on the day of independence the mm. 15th of august mm. my colony mm. would have a race it would it was around a 2 km race mm. and it, in indian made ordinary cycles would be used mm. now i didn't have a cycle mm. i didn't have shoes i didn't have a cycling shorts neither, neither did, did i have a cycling jersey mm. but i had something that nobody else had i think i had it in me that i am going to win mm. that all these things didn't really matter to me mm. i said i need a cycle and i need to get on that cycle mm. doesn't matter if i'm barefoot or doesn't matter if i don't have proper clothing mm. i need that cycle and i need to win mm. so i went on a, for a hired cycle in my time we used to we used to call them they used to be called taxi cycles uh. you had to pay per hour right so we would i would pay for that hour hoping that uh, the race would not be delayed i would have to pay for one more hour uh. i would hire that cycle and I, when i went to the start line i took this cycle and went to the start line the organizers came and said you can't take part in this event because you are too small you are too young uh. this is for 18 and above uh-huh. so i literally played it with them mm. you know please allow me uh. so the organizers told me you know you will disturb these other riders mm. and you will you might have an accident mm. so seeing my enthusiasm and seeing my zeal mm. and seeing uh, literally i was literally uh, begging of him to allow me to participate uh. so they ultimately had a discussion and they came back to me and they said we will allow you on one condition uh. you do not go in the front of the bunch because uh. you will cause a problem and you might cause an accident uh. so right from the start they put me right behind the bunch uh. and they were thinking that i'm going to end in that in the same manner uh-huh. and they also told me don't try to go in the front uh-huh. because you're never going to make it mm. and you would be a disturbance to the others mm. so i was put right behind the bunch uh-huh. they were they were around i think 25 28 riders in that bunch uh-huh. the moment the whistle went mm. it took me i think 25 to 30 seconds to come from the back of the bunch right in the front <laughs> of the bunch i was 
I didn't look back. That the next time I looked back was about halfway through the race, which was about one and a half, one one and a half kilometer through. Uh-huh. I seen the riders around fifty meters behind me. Uh-huh. The next time I turned back to look was around five hundred meters before the finish line. They were more than hundred meters behind me. <laughs> By the time I touched the finish line, they were more than hundred and fifty meters. The second rider was more than hundred and fifty meters behind me. So they could not even believe it. Uh-huh. But I was so sure. I yeah. was very sure. Even the moment they allowed me on that uh, to ride, yeah. I was sure that I am going to get, get that that position. That was the confidence. That is what I am trying to teach my my students. You know, yeah. you have to have it in you. Once you have it, it's just a matter of time. Everything was paining. You know, mm. I was. They came to a stage 500 meters before the finish line. Mm. I again thought I am going to die. Mm. But I said, doesn't matter. Yeah. Of course, I didn't have my coach at then. Yeah. But I said, doesn't matter, but I need to cross that line. Uh, and once I found a coach, uh, he would tell me the same thing. Cross uh, the line and die, you know, <laughs> if you're feeling like that. So this is how I started my sport. And Mumtaz identified my talent in these local races. Uh, and then he took and nurtured me. Uh, and from there, made me the, the national champion and uh, could take me to this level of creating so many national records. That is mind-blowing story, sir. 11 or 12-year-old winning against 18-year-olds, it was, it's just mind-blowing. So no wonder that you went on to win so many medals and for so many years have been an Indian uh, national champion. Sir, I, when, when did the velodrome come to Hyderabad? The velodrome was built in 2002. It wow, was built in okay. 2001 mm. because the 2002 National Games were held in Hyderabad. Mm. So it was constructed for the purpose of the National Games mm. that was held in 2002. Okay. So till that time, you know, be, before you, uh, you know, for all your career, you've been, uh, that you have been a champion, you are trained on road. So, of course, there are, uh, even now, yeah, across India, there are only a handful of velodromes. But uh, the talent that we find uh, or, you know, doing well in track is very much there. So what is the kind of training that people can do to do well, uh, you know, on track while on their, uh, you know, while training on road? Yeah, I I think uh, not doing well in road Mm. uh, has nothing to do with the number of tracks. It's a different event. Mm. But the reason why we do not do well in road, Mm. I personally feel, Mm. is because the traffic conditions Mm. anywhere in in India Mm. does not permit... We don't have a separate lane for cycling. Mm. We do not have a separate road for cycling. Mm. So, which makes it extremely difficult... Mm to go and take your riders on any highway. Mm. Like even today, Mm. we had to travel 18 kilometers out of the city Mm. to get a start point. Mm. And even that road is not uh, absolutely zero traffic. You have minimum traffic. So getting there up 18 kilometers up, 18 kilometers down, there's a lot of logistics. There's Mm. a lot. You see in the time, how much of time it takes. So taking all these aspects in mind, training riders on road becomes a very, very challenging fact in Mm. India. Yeah. Well, as on the other hand, mm. velodromes are an enclosed place. Mm. You you don't have these problems of traffic. Controlled you, environment. Yeah, you yeah. have a controlled environment. Some of them have floodlights. Mm. You know, you have you have a choice to train at at night or day mm. or whenever you want. Mm. The one in Delhi even has a controlled temperature. Mm. So you know these are the benefits and the added advantages for track riders. Mm. That is why they do well. Obviously, Mm. if you have the right infrastructure, you can produce the right athletes. Mm. We do not have the proper infrastructure for road riding. Mm. That is why taking a, can we, you can, I can uh, train a six-year-old on on the track, Mm. but I can't train a six-year-old every day on the road. Yeah. It's very challenging. Today was the first day that some of these, all these riders between the age group of six to 12, Mm. today was the first day they got a feel of what riding on a highway is. So you see how challenging it is. This is is not possible to do every day. We needed a a whole kind of a team. They were around, I think, uh, uh, 30 students. We had, Mm. I think, more than 30 parents 
yeah. uh, supporting us there. Hmm. Now, so much of support staff hmm. to train on road is really practically impossible. Yeah. And that is one of the reasons hmm. we do not do well in road. That hmm. is, This is my personal yeah. thought though. But yeah. I think it's, it's very hmm. uh, practical if you sit to think. Hmm. You cannot actually use a road hmm. as and when you like. Right. You cannot use it at any time with, with total traffic free. Hmm. Closing a road even for any event is hmm. become virtually impossible in hmm. India hmm. because you cannot close a road because putting others into inconvenience. Right. So these are the difficult challenges that we face in road. Hmm. On the other hand, in track, yes. If you see the, the people who don't have tracks, you have the choice of moving from one city to the other city to train. Mm. That is why all the centers, the Kelo India centers mm. that uh, the camps are organized in, mm. all these cities have tracks. Mm. So you have so many talented youngsters mm. in the age group of 12 to 14, 12 to 15, mm. training in these Kelo India camps. Mm. And that is why I think... Uh, we, we can produce better track riders than mm. road riders. Yeah. So how many uh, velodromes do we have and how many such camps are there for people to approach and, you know, get See, there? Kelo India, I'll, I'll tell you mm. uh, how, how Kelo India goes about it. Uh. I'm, I'm also one of the talent TIDC members uh. of the Kelo India project. Yeah. It's a talent identification development committee. Mm. So here, the National Federation, the Cycling Federation of India... Mm. They all the time keep looking out for talent. Right. So there is a specified way of identifying talent, mm. which is, it's called a standing broad jump in mm. where you make a, a athlete or a rider stand and in a, from a stationary position, how far can he jump? Mm. So this is one of, this indicates the explosive power he has. This indicates the fast twitch muscles in his, in his body, in his legs. Mm. So this is one. They have a standard format for this. Mm. For boys, it is 7.5 feet, mm. which is 7 feet 6 inches. Mm. For every inch beyond 7 feet 6 inches, the, the rider or the athlete gets one point. Mm. They have a point system. In a similar manner, you have a standing vertical high jump. Mm. So if for boys, it is 24 inches off the ground. Mm. For every inch beyond 24 inches, they get one point. In a similar manner, for boys, again, it is 1,600 meters of running, mm. which the cutoff time is uh, six minutes. Mm. Anything below six minutes, they get a points. Mm. This is the kind of point system. These are the three uh, basic tests mm. that is done for a Kelo India selection. Mm. If an athlete qualifies in these three tests, mm. he is then put through a more cycling-specific test, mm -hmm. which is done on a watt bike. Okay. A watt bike is a a stationary cycle right equipped with all the gadgets and computers and uh, to indicate to you how much of uh, energy not how much of power you are putting on on your pedal right if the amount of pressure that you apply on the pedal mm. is converted into power mm. to give you a reading so the amount of effort that is put on the pedal is is converted into power and that gives you a power number mm. it also you are hooked up to a heart heart rate uh, support system. Mm. You wear a heart rate belt or a heart rate uh, gadget on your hand mm. and that gives you your heart rate reading. So while the rider is riding, we also do FTP tests, which is a functional threshold power test, mm. which you can do uh, for 20 minutes for one hour. There's a kind of calculation for that. Mm. If you do it for 25, 20 minutes, you multiply that into 0 0.95. Mm. So you get the average power yeah so this is what they do of course they don't do a ftp test for these kids mm. they, they do a test for six seconds for 30 seconds and for four minutes okay by this they they can tell one can tell mm. or a coach can tell mm. which area this young athlete mm. can be further developed in right. which area he has the talent so basically they are trying to identify fast twitch muscles and slow twitch muscles here mm. So when they go through this most cycling specific test, once they get the readings of your of your power numbers and things like that, they can confirm and then they pick the best. Mm. Of course, that is the best is after your the qualifying mark. Mm. If you don't qualify, you don't you don't get into you don't even go to that test. Right. So all those who qualify, mm. the best out of the qualified are then again taken. Mm. And we have five centers now. The Kelo mm. India has five centers. Mm. One center is in Delhi. One centers in Kerala, one centers in Karnataka, another centers in Manipur, mm. and the last center is in uh, Gawati. 
Okay. So we have these five centers. Mm. All five centers have velodromes. Mm. The the Cycling Federation of India in in consultation with the Sports Authority of India mm. provide all the equipment mm. and all that is necessary. They get a high calculated um, diet. Mm. The nutrition is good. Mm. All these centers have qualified coaches. Mm. They have not only NIS coaches, they also have UCI level 2 coaches. Mm. The main center in Delhi uh, is, is uh, also run in, in the velodrome, in the indoor velodrome, mm. in which uh, you have qualified coaches there, it's there also. Mm. So these centers are equipped with not only the equipment, they also equipped with qualified coaches. Mm. And this is one good example. The Kelo India selection process is one good example. Mm. I always say this. The, the boy who won the medal at the at the World Championship, mm. Esau, mm. he was identified in the similar manner. Mm. There was an identification kind of talent hunt right. that was done in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Mm. And uh, members of the CFI went to the mm. Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Mm. And he was one of them identified in these in these very same tests that I'm talking about. Correct. This standing broad jump, standing high jump. Mm. So you see here... Uh, athlete who never sat on a cycle mm. was selected to become a good cyclist. Yeah. So you you see you see how effective this is. Right. The selection for a world champion yeah. was done not on a cycle. Yeah. It was done uh, in these basic tests. Yes. So this proves yeah. that this is a tested and proven fact of the method mm. that works. Mm. And Esau was identified in this very same process. Right. Was called in the camp to Delhi was then developed, his ta talent was developed there mm. and he went on to become a world champion. Right. So these, uh, <laughs> the identified talent can, uh, will be uh, staying at these camps and will be undergoing the training, right, sir? Yes. So these are different centers. Mm. You have a choice to, to opt for mm. which center you want. Mm. Depending on the vacancy in these centers, mm. they all have a maximum upper limit. Okay. So you would be put in those centers. Mm. The Delhi center is always the main center. Mm. These other four centers are called feeding units mm. where you produce a good athlete and then you send him to Delhi mm. for further development mm. and better kind of facilities right. that are there in Delhi. Mm. So in these camps, mm. some have a maximum limit of 40, 50, 60, mm. depending on the uh, infrastructure and the facilities available there. Mm. And every two or three months, they have a weeding out process mm. in which the athletes who are not performing well, mm. the athletes in the 50, let's say in all 50 riders, mm. the last two or three athletes mm. that are not performing, the mm. last of the table, mm. the last of the list, mm. those who are not performing well, mm. they would be removed from the camp mm. and fresh talent would be inducted into this camp. Okay. So there is a constant weeding out process mm. and there's a constant induction of new talent. Mm. So this keeps the athlete fit, keeps him motivated, keeps him wanting to be in the camp if he wants to be in the camp mm. he has to perform mm. so it is all performance motivational kind of stuff yeah that only if you perform you will be there mm. the benefits are tremendous yeah because not only the nutrition not only the training mm. the scientific training mm. you have the best equipment mm. and besides that you get a 10000 rupees scholarship every month mm. as a kind of pocket money right. so this is a great incentive yeah no this is i i think the, you know as you rightly said the kind of talent hunt that is happening there and uh, the kind of uh, uh, facilities that uh, through kelo india uh, they are putting through i think is uh, reaping the uh, seeing the benefit uh, results out uh, on the track and uh, excellent uh, show at the at least at the junior level right now we are seeing uh, i think over the years uh, we will also see that in in elite category also right i must say this year yeah. you know the the tre tremendous transformation in track cycling in india mm. the credit has to go where it's due mm. And the due credit has to go to the Cycling Federation of India. Undoubtedly. They are, they are headed, the Cycling Federation of India today is headed mm. by a great group of people. Mm. I always say this. Mm. I will also give you examples of why I say this. Yes. They are doing a tremendous job under the leadership of uh, the president, mm. Dinsha Saab, under mm. the leadership of the chairman, mm. Onkarji, mm. and the general secretary, Manandar Pal Singh. Mm. This team is an excellent team. You know, in the last nationals, mm. that was just recently, one week ago, I was part of the nationals. Mm. 
Manindar Singh, hmm. who is the General Secretary of the Cycling Federation of India, hmm. came to me and said, you know, I identified some talent. I want you to check them out. Hmm. Now, imagine hmm. the General Secretary of the of our National Federation yeah. is come for the Nationals. Normally in this position, yeah. they are the chief guest. Yeah. They just sit there and they move. Yeah. Manindar Pal Singh was in search of talent. Yeah. He was actually, and he identified four yeah. and he made me conduct he, he asked me to conduct a test on them mm. and when i conducted the test mm. i was surprised mm. because these guys were much better than what the required uh, mark is yeah so i was amazed mm. that is one part mm. now when i say I, when i talk about the efficiency of this uh, these people heading mm. the, the the cycling federation of india mm. another example in this very nationals mm-hmm. this mountain bike mm. the circuit which was very, very challenging, mm. very difficult to even walk. Mm. It was a 5.3 kilometer circuit. Mm. So normally as commissioners, mm. we inspect the entire track. Mm. In a mountain bike, it's mm. not possible to even use a two-wheeler. Mm. So the only mode of to check the track is by foot. Mm. So we generally walk the entire course. circuit course, mm. depending on whatever the distance is. Mm. This particular time... Mm. The General Secretary Manandar Pal Singh Ji accompanied us uh. and I was sure that he's going to come to the start line and wait till we come back. Mm. But to my utter surprise, mm. he walked along with us. Yeah. He had a fractured hand. His <laughs> hand was in a cast. He came inspecting the entire 5.3 kilometers course with us uh. to get a first-hand information of how what the course is about, about the safety aspects. Yeah. Now, the, I always say this. This is what leading from the front means. Absolutely. Another thing, mm. Onkar Saab, mm. Onkar Ji, mm is the general secretary of the asian cycling confederation mm. now you should you should understand there are 44 playing countries in asia mm. uh, under the acc mm. for cycling mm. now in these 44 countries there are very very powerful countries in cycling mm. you know you have south korea you have china you have japan you have uh, malaysia yeah. you have so many big names in cycling right and every country wants their person to be elected to represent uh, them at the Asian Cycling Confederation. Mm. And in all these 44 countries, in all these 44 uh, candidates that were fielded, mm. Onkar Saab wins unanimously mm. to, for the post of General Secretary. Mm. That itself shows the efficiency of the man. That itself shows that he's not only been developing cycling in India, mm. but he's gone beyond the borders of India mm. and developing cycling in Asia also. Mm. Even the courses that we have Mm. The, the national course, courses for coaches mm. that we have in India. He, extend these, he extends these facilities beyond the borders of India mm. and other countries also take part in these coaching classes. Mm. The last time we were teaching in these classes, mm. we were requested to speak only in English mm. because of the international participation. Right. We had a number of countries participating in this, uh, these programs. Mm. So this is how... I'm proud to to be an Indian and to see Indians at this level. Mm. Even the president of the Cycling Federation of India, Dinshaji, mm. is the vice president of the ACC. Mm. So we have two Indians in two very good posts in these 44 uh, countries of Asian Cycling Confederation. Mm. So I, hats off to them and the uh, hats off to the great job they're yeah, doing. I think that the kind of leadership that is there now uh, is... Uh, resulting in these, uh, you know, great execution of uh, talent hunt and development of talent and also the kind of improvements we see at uh, the uh, events, the nationals, uh, be it MTB or track or uh, the road nationals, I think uh, has been tremendous uh, progress over the years. Like the, uh, the example you took, is there you know a, a person of that caliber walking the course and taking first hand information shows the kind of commitment they have for uh, you know the execution of these uh, events so kudos to the thing one small example i'll give you about the tremendous change i mm. call it they've they've taken cycling into a new dimension mm. i always say this yeah. when i started cycling mm. the national federation at that time had six cycles mm. these cycles were fairly good good to participate in international competition mm. and the federation had six cycles today the federation has 600 cycles mm. can you believe each cycle is around 8 to 10 lakhs right. and the federation with the hard work, has managed to acquire 600 cycles. Mm. Now, that is a great, great task, yeah. which clearly indicates that we lack, we do not lack mm. in equipment anymore in India. Yeah. The, if you want to get to the camp, mm. till you get to the camp is a little bit difficult because mm. they cannot provide equipment mm. to each and everyone. Yeah. It is kept for the, the identified, the talent identified lot. Right. So, we 
in our camp hmm. is trying to work hmm. to nurture these talent hmm. and to get them into the camp once hmm. they get into the camp then the national federation will take care of all their needs right. so that is the i aim and that is why we are working on these children hmm. not right now to make them world champions hmm. but to just become a feeding unit to the put camps. them to identify the right talent hmm. put them into the camp nurture them till that point from mm. they they will go into into hands that have all that is required mm. to make them olympic champions right. so when i say i'm going to make olympic champions mm. it's not that i'm going to take these kids work the work on them till the olympics right i am going to make them prepare them mm. to put them in a process mm. that they will go through ultimately through the cycling federation of india right. and they will be able to that is why i'm so sure mm. because this is a kind of teamwork yeah. where we become feeding units yeah. they have the i don't have the infrastructures yeah. so if i want to make an olympic champion today mm. i don't have the infrastructures right. i don't even have a watt bike yeah. i have a, a wahoo bike mm. where is is a kind of similar bike but mm. with, a, with a big difference right so they have the infrastructures they have acquired the infrastructures mm. so when i say i my boys are going to win at the olympics mm. i'm sure because this is how my plan is mm. and this is how i'm going to work it yeah. and see that my boys win at the at the olympics brilliant sir this has been a fantastic experience sitting with you to talk about uh, you know your plans the kind of great work you are putting in because it has been a great meeting you in person uh, again after uh, i think we met in uh, one of the nationals yes. uh, in 2017 and uh, great i've been following uh, uh, your uh, work the great work you have been doing over the years and uh, i've been a big fan and i've been wanting to interact with you get to talk to you and uh, i think uh, it's been a fantastic uh, experience sitting and getting all the knowledge from you thank you for taking I, the time and sharing that i'm very you. humbled and honored for the kind words you put uh, given me uh, venki but i cannot take the fact away from the work you are doing as well i have seen the work you do in bangalore i have seen the 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 great work you've done for the cycling in on whole i've seen the way you nurture the community at, at large and these are the people we need people like you we need more and more people like us mm. to get this sport i always say my aim is to make cycling like cricket in india yes. if we are having a national championship we want 1 lakh people to come and see us because that's how interesting the sport is it might take time i may not be on this planet yeah. but it would happen one day yeah. and i'm sure and if we need to do that hmm. we definitely need many many venkies and many maxwells as well <laughs> yeah. we cannot do this alone yeah. so let us put do whatever little we can yeah. and be sure it's just a matter of time where we will see this sport not only at the olympic level but we'll see it with the a craze in the public to to get into this sport to come and see this sport there will be national viewing there will be a great spectatorship and i'm saying this with confidence because i seen it in the 21st event that we had mm. we had 5000 spectators for a kids event mm. why can't we have more and more spectators for mm. more for bigger events mm. i am very sure it will definitely happen and it's just a matter of time so i am really thankful to you for taking your time out coming you know spending so much of time uh going all the way from here to the start point sitting so patiently at the start point i did not have the time to interact with you there because i was doing yeah. one group after the other one yeah. group and then finally i had to take care of the professionals i had to go with them uh you know it's it's a very di- difficult task i wouldn't call it difficult though mm. because i enjoy it yeah it seems difficult for people when they see me Correct. they think i'm doing a very big thing yeah. but the end of the day i'm actually enjoying what i'm doing yeah. it's not an effort to me because i enjoy it yeah. i enjoy every bit of it yeah. i had my you know i had a very difficult time because my day starts at 4 o'clock in the morning yeah. it finishes uh of course it i i go to bed by 9 9:30 blessed yeah. by 10 o'clock yeah but this was you know my wife and my family were beginning to tell me you know is cycling everything in your life <laughs> so i was i didn't know what to do so i came out with this idea the best thing to do is get them involved <laughs> so i involved my wife i involved my daughter i involved my son <laughs> they are all part of this academy <laughs> they do a great job as well yeah. now we are a team doing something that we like and i managed to convince them <laughs> i managed to make them love the sport today <laughs> they love the sport they are there for any event they are there for any for most of the training sessions they are there uh-huh. and we have become 
now as i teach my students you have to be a team yeah. i teach them in the house also let us work as a team yeah. and this has been greatly successful for me yeah. so i have no more tension in the house because <laughs> they love the sport just as much as i yeah. and we work as a team in the i've learned this working as a team not only in the house yeah. even if you seen today working as a team a coach is not somebody who stands on a pedestal a coach is the one who leads from the front right and I, there's another big aspect i must mention this year mm. when we first started training children mm. i noticed one uh, what should i say one very very common habit in most of the children mm. they would eat a chocolate and throw the paper wherever they are standing mm. and nobody thought anything about it like it was not even considered to be wrong mm. and i was so upset i said you know why that is why people you know when when a person when a foreigner comes here he always says you know your streets are dirty that's why I, so i said let us do something yeah so i started teaching the children mm. of course nobody got it at first mm. i number of times i told them but they it's a force of habit we all done it even right. i done it as yeah. a kid yeah. it's only now that i realize that this is not right mm. and i i said let us make a change mm. so then i said by telling them is not actually working mm. i've been telling them once twice so many times it's not working mm. so what do i do mm. so i said let us try a new method mm. so every now i've told them so many times mm. so every time they threw it i would go and pick it up mm. they would feel totally embarrassed yeah. you know i stopped telling them i said i'm not going to tell you anymore you yeah. throw it i will pick it up yeah so i done it once or twice yeah. that made such a tremendous change like you know even now they are still in the habit they throw it and then pick it up again <laughs> so i see in this uh, as a great change yeah. i always tell my students we have to make a difference the cycling community in india yeah. has to make a difference yeah. not only in cycling but to the community to the nation at at large yeah. we not only contribute a non polluting vehicle mm. we not only give a healthy a lifestyle mm. but we will also contribute to the environment to so we what we do is if you notice today mm. we carry our own garbage bags mm. we fill them we don't throw that bag there we put it back in the car mm. we bring it home we mm. put it in the garbage bin because we have vehicles coming and picking up the garbage mm. and this i started now i don't have to tell anyone right. if you notice today yeah. maybe once or twice i still do it because yeah. there are st- students who keep coming yeah. there are new students always yeah but this has made a tremendous change mm. i've seen the parents <laughs> excuse i've seen the parents doing it now i don't have to tell it now right. the parents also start yeah and i told my, even a banana skin although a banana skin is good for the environment it doesn't harm like plastic yeah but to get an habit because mm. if they throw a banana skin mm. they can they will throw something else yeah. it's a it's the habit that has to stop mm. so i told them whatever it is if it's a banana skin even though because a child will tell you today yeah. this is good for the plant yeah. i can throw it yeah. so but it's not the what is good for, it's to break the habit yeah. so i tell them put it in your t-shirt pouch at the back yeah. come back or yeah. give it to me if i'm on the bike i will yeah. take it and put it yeah. so people have started noticing this mm. parents have given me a lot of applause for this yeah. because i always say we always say what our con- what is our country doing there's so much garbage mm. it's not the country mm. what are we doing for our country right we have to make we are the people we make the change mm. so this is what is being appreciated yeah. and i think this we have there's no big deal in doing the right thing right. so we are just trying to teach a child mm. we were all children once upon a time we all done this yeah. but we are just trying to teach our children to do the right thing mm. and be sometimes we have to become children yeah. to teach children yeah. so there's nothing wrong in becoming a child now and then yeah. and behaving like a child and playing with a child yeah. i play games with them yeah. i act like a child yeah. and that's what brings the best out of a child and that is what we are here for yeah. to get the best out of every child yeah i have seen that first hand uh, today sir and uh, you leading by example is uh, something that really really struck me and uh, i i take this as a learning uh, going from here and uh, thanks again for uh, all the uh, great work you do and uh, uh, and all again taking the the time out for the working athlete podcast and sharing your uh, experience here you don't have to thank me make anything connected to cycling is my pleasure i actually do it with pleasure yeah. even this podcast yeah. if it's going to help even 10 people yeah. because we are just trying to pro- uh, project the facts of the game yeah. we are just trying to project the facts and what your child can achieve by coming into this sport not only being becoming fit there are so many other benefits and if we do it the right way and if we focus in these small areas we can make a difference in every child's life and that is what we are here for and if 10 children can listen to me and 
if one of those 10 stop throwing garbage on the road i think that's an achievement mm-hmm. and this is how we start and i really thank you for doing all that you are doing for the sport for the community coming all the way taking so much of time out spending so much of time with us i also thank you so much and i appreciate all that you are doing thank you venki thank you sir that was my chat with dr maxwell trevor i hope it was as enjoyable for you as it was for me if you are enjoying this podcast please make sure you subscribe to the channel on youtube the channel name is bikey venki b i k e y v e n k y it really helps also make sure you subscribe to the podcast the working athlete podcast on whatever podcasting app you use be it spotify apple podcast google podcast amazon music or any other platform thank you uh, until next time see you